Imagine going through an entire day and night without eating, and then continuing into the next morning with nothing but water, herbal tea, maybe some electrolytes, no snacking, no nibbling, no late night cravings, just quiet, just stillness, just the body, finally free from the constant metabolic noise of digestion. This is the experience of the 36 hour monk fast, an ancient practice modern science is finally beginning to understand. And what we now know about what happens during those 36 hours is nothing short of remarkable. You are about to discover that monk fasting isn't simply longer intermittent fasting. It isn't starvation. It isn't deprivation. It's a deeply biological, highly strategic process that unlocks metabolic pathways your body has been waiting, sometimes begging for you to activate. We're talking about fat breakdown, cellular repair, mitochondrial renewal, insulin resetting, inflammation reduction, and deep metabolic cleansing, all in a single, structured fasting window. And as you'll see, the body begins shifting into this healing mode far earlier than most people realize. Most people think fasting is just not eating. But fasting is actually a conversation between your brain, your cells, and your energy regulation systems. When food is absent, your body begins sending new instructions. Instructions that say, prioritize efficiency, fix what's broken, burn stored energy, recycle damaged components, and unlock emergency pathways designed to extend life. For millions of years, humans went through periods of food scarcity. Fasting is not new. But what's new is that we now have scientific data showing how fasting, especially fasting beyond 24 hours, creates profound metabolic changes. And this is why the 36-hour monk fast has become one of the most powerful tools for fat loss and cellular rejuvenation. The journey truly begins around the 12-hour mark. You've gone half a day without food, and your body's glycogen-stored sugar in the liver is running low. This is the moment when your insulin levels finally begin to fall significantly. Insulin is the hormone that locks fat into storage mode. When insulin drops low enough, it sends your body a message it rarely hears in our modern world. Unlock the fat stores. Release the energy. Begin the burn. Most people never reach this state because they constantly snack or eat late into the night, keeping insulin elevated around the clock. But your monk fast is breaking that cycle. By now, your body is switching from external fuel, the food you normally eat, into internal fuel. And that internal fuel is your own fat. This is the first major step toward transforming your metabolism. By the 16 to 20 hour mark, something even more interesting happens. Your fat cells begin releasing fatty acids steadily into the bloodstream. And your liver begins converting some of these fats into ketones. Ketones are an extraordinary molecule. Your brain can use them for fuel, your heart can use them, your muscles can use them. They burn cleaner than glucose, producing fewer free radicals and less metabolic waste. Most importantly, ketones act as signaling molecules. They trigger pathways that reduce inflammation, enhance autophagy, repair damaged DNA, and even stimulate the growth of new brain cells. When people say fasting gives them mental clarity, this is why. The brain loves ketones. It actually performs better on them. And this cognitive shift is one of the reasons monk fasting has been practiced by spiritual traditions for centuries. But the magic of the monk fast truly awakens after the 24-hour point. At this stage, your body crosses a threshold most people never experience. You are no longer just burning fat. You are reorganizing your cellular economy. Let me explain. Every cell in your body contains damaged proteins, misfolded structures, broken mitochondria, and sluggish components that need to be removed. Normally, these damaged parts accumulate because the body is too busy processing food, toxins, and daily stress. But during a 36-hour fast, autophagy, the process of cellular recycling, goes into high gear. Autophagy literally means self-eating. But it's a good kind of eating. It's the removal of dysfunctional materials to make space for new, healthier ones. Think of it as spring cleaning your biology. Autophagy is the reason fasting is linked to longevity. It's your body's way of preventing disease at the molecular level. 
What's fascinating is that autophagy doesn't just clean, it rebuilds. When unneeded or damaged components are broken down, the raw materials, amino acids, nucleotides, fatty acids are reused to create stronger cellular structures. This is one reason why fasting appears to improve immune function. Old immune cells are cleared away, and new ones begin forming once eating resumes. It's also why fasting improves skin health, tissue repair, and even metabolic flexibility. By the time you hit 24-30 hours into your monk fast, your body is operating at maximum cellular efficiency. It's not sluggish, it's fired up. It's not shutting down, it's optimizing. And the more often you allow this state to occur, the more metabolically resilient you become. Now let's talk about fat. When your body moves deeper into the fast, it begins targeting visceral fat, the fat stored deep inside your abdomen around your organs. This is the dangerous fat responsible for insulin resistance, inflammation, fatty liver, and increased risk of chronic disease. Most diets do not target visceral fat effectively, but fasting does. During a 36-hour monk fast, the body is drawing heavily from its internal energy reserves, and visceral fat becomes a prime target. Studies show that fasting reduces visceral fat more efficiently than traditional calorie restriction. Why? Because fasting creates the hormonal environment necessary for fat mobilization, lower insulin, higher growth hormone, increased norepinephrine, and metabolic shifting toward fat oxidation. These hormonal changes do not happen with normal dieting. They require extended periods without food. And that's exactly what you're activating. As you progress past the 30-hour point, you reach the peak of metabolic healing. This is when the benefits compound. Growth hormone levels rise dramatically. Growth hormone isn't just about muscle. It's also about cellular repair, collagen support, and fat breakdown. At the same time, insulin is at its lowest point. Lower insulin sensitivity during fasting is often misunderstood. What's actually happening is your cells are resetting their insulin receptors. Once you reintroduce food, your body responds far more efficiently. This is why monk fasting is used by people trying to reverse early insulin resistance, because fasting creates a metabolic reset in a way few other interventions can. Another remarkable shift happening around this time involves your mitochondria, the power plants inside your cells. Mitochondria suffer damage over time from poor diet, stress, toxins, and aging. But fasting activates mitochondrial biogenesis, the process of making new, stronger mitochondria. Imagine exchanging old, damaged batteries for fresh ones. This is one reason people often feel energized after completing a monk fast. Their mitochondria are literally functioning better. And because energy production improves, fat burning becomes easier in the days after the fast. Your body becomes more efficient, more flexible, more capable of switching between fuel sources. This metabolic flexibility is the hallmark of a healthy metabolism. Now, you may wonder, what happens mentally and emotionally during a monk fast? Surprisingly, many people describe a sense of calm that emerges after the 24-hour point. This is not just psychological, it's biochemical. Ketones and fasting stimulate the release of GABA, a neurotransmitter that reduces anxiety. Fasting also increases BDNF brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which supports memory, learning, and brain resilience. This is why fasting is being studied for cognitive health and neuroprotection. But beyond the science, there is something deeply grounding about giving the digestive system a rest. The body feels lighter, the mind feels clearer. Focus sharpens. And the spiritual traditions that practiced monk fasting understood this long before science did. As you approach the final stretch past 32 hours and up to 36, you are in the deepest fat-burning zone. At this point, the majority of your energy is coming from fat. The liver continues producing ketones steadily. Autophagy remains highly active, and inflammation markers are significantly reduced. If you struggle with joint stiffness, bloating, brain fog, or chronic inflammation, the final hours of monk fasting are often where the biggest improvements occur. Inflammation is energy intensive. When the body is not occupied with digestion, it diverts resources toward reducing inflammation. 
This is why fasting has been shown to lower markers like CRP and oxidative stress. You are giving your body a break from the constant inflammatory triggers of everyday eating. So then the natural question is, how do you break a monk fast properly? Because the refeeding phase is just as important as the fast itself. When you reintroduce food, your digestive system wakes up gradually. The enzymes start flowing. The gut microbiome responds. Your cells begin using fuel again. The best way to break a 36-hour fast is with gentle, nutrient-dense foods, a broth, steamed vegetables, fermented foods, lean proteins, healthy fats. Nothing too heavy, nothing too processed, nothing that shocks the system. When you break the fast correctly, the metabolic benefits continue long after the fast ends. Your insulin sensitivity remains improved. Your fat-burning engines remain active. Your cells continue building newer, stronger components, and your hunger patterns begin to normalize. If you struggle with appetite, cravings, or nighttime eating, monk fasting helps recalibrate your internal clock. Over time, people who practice monk fasting once a week or twice a month begin noticing life-changing benefits. Easier fat loss, reduced bloating, improved blood sugar, better sleep, clearer thinking, reduced inflammation, and more stable energy levels. Their eating patterns become more intuitive. Their body stops demanding constant food. Their metabolism becomes sharper. And perhaps most importantly, their relationship with food becomes healthier, not based on restriction, but on alignment with their biology. Fasting is not punishment, it is restoration. And despite what many people assume, a 36-hour fast doesn't shrink your metabolism. In fact, studies show the opposite. Short-term fasting increases resting energy expenditure. This is because growth hormone rises and norepinephrine, the fat mobilizing hormone, increases. Your body doesn't slow down. It accelerates. Your metabolism becomes more efficient precisely because it is using its stored resources. Starvation and fasting are not the same. Starvation is unplanned, uncontrolled, and the body responds by shutting down. Fasting is intentional, controlled, and the body responds by optimizing. Now let's talk about the fat-burning timeline within the monk fast, because this is where most people experience the transformation. During the first 12 hours, you're burning mostly glucose. Between 12 and 20 hours, you switch into fat-burning mode. Between 20 and 30 hours, ketones take over and fat-burning becomes dominant. Between 30 and 36 hours, the body begins tapping into deeper fat reserves including visceral fat. This is why the final stretch is so powerful. You are not simply losing water. You are burning stored energy with extraordinary efficiency. One of the most fascinating discoveries about monk fasting is that lean mass, the muscle you want to preserve, remains intact. Growth hormone protects it. Ketones protect it. Your body is biologically designed to preserve muscle during fasting. Muscle was essential for survival. So if your concern is muscle loss, the research is clear. Short-term fasting does not sacrifice muscle tissue. It preserves it while targeting fat. And then there's the hormonal effect. Fasting dramatically reduces insulin, but it also improves leptin sensitivity. Leptin is the hormone that tells your brain when you're full. Many people are resistant to leptin, which is why they always feel hungry. Monk fasting helps reset that pathway. After a 36-hour fast, your hunger patterns often shift. You feel satisfied with less food. Cravings weaken. Emotional eating decreases. Your appetite becomes more stable. This is the real power of monk fasting. It restores the communication between your hormones and your brain. Once that resets, fat loss becomes natural, not forced. If you think about our ancestors, a 36-hour fast was normal. They hunted, foraged, traveled, and sometimes went days without food. Their bodies adapted beautifully to these rhythms. Modern humans, however, are rarely in a fasted state longer than eight hours, and that's if they sleep well. By practicing monk fasting, you are reactivating an ancient biological program, a program designed to heal, a program designed to burn fat, a program designed to restore balance. 
So what can you expect the first time you try a monk fast? The first 12 hours usually feel normal. Between 12 and 18 hours, you may feel hunger waves, but they pass quickly. After 18 hours, you begin feeling lighter. After 24 hours, ketones increase and your mental clarity improves. After 30 hours, many people describe a sense of calm, focus, and smooth energy. And near the 36-hour mark, something remarkable happens. You realize how capable your body truly is. You realize that hunger is not an emergency. You realize your metabolism is far more flexible than you were taught. You realize your body thrives on rest, not just sleep, but metabolic rest. And when you end the fast, you feel renewed. Your digestion feels smoother. Your inflammation feels lower. Your mind feels clearer. And your confidence grows. Not because you restricted yourself, but because you honored your biology. You gave your body space to heal. And your body responded exactly as it was designed to do. That is the real beauty of the 36-hour monk fast. It teaches you that food is fuel, not a constant necessity. It teaches you that fat is stored energy, not an enemy. It teaches you that your body already knows how to heal if you step out of the way. It teaches you that you are stronger, metabolically, and mentally than you ever realized. And this is why the 36-hour monk fast is one of the most powerful tools we have today, not only for dropping fat, but for transforming metabolic health at the deepest levels. It aligns with science. It aligns with human biology. And it aligns with centuries of wisdom. When you fast for 36 hours, you're not depriving your body. You're giving it a gift. The gift of repair. The gift of renewal. The gift of balance. And the results speak for themselves. If you commit to practicing monk fasting strategically, whether once a week, twice a month, or even once a quarter, you will begin experiencing changes that ripple through every part of your life. Better energy, better focus, better digestion, improved fat loss, reduced inflammation, and a stronger, more resilient body. The journey is simple, but the impact is profound. And as always, your body is ready. It's been ready. All it needs is the space to heal.